Your tweet said, sorry, but the truck is good. Why? <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm, I, will, I will defend the truck this time. Look, it, it's, it's got to be a Tesla move to do something totally out of the ordinary. I didn't think it, they would have a sort of uh, iterative design of, of maybe slightly more sleek, and, and uh, I think they really needed to make a statement with this. And look, I think they expected most folks were going to be very polarized on this, but I imagine the enthusiasts are going to really go for it and perhaps uh, uh, drive adoption later on, at least at some point. And I think, look, I think um, these were the these were the cars that we thought were going to be part of the future. This is the stuff that I played on Super Nintendo when I was growing up and wanted to be in my life at some point. So maybe for nerds like me, it's like it's an actual success. As for the window, Kevin, uh, Musk is a smart guy. Yeah, I, I cannot believe he, he did not know this was going to happen. I can't believe they didn't do that a hundred times right. before. So, do, so do you think this happen. is a buzz creator? Uh, no. Actually, I think that was an epic fail in real time that, uh, that they didn't anticipate for whatever reason. They threw it harder. It was a different ball. Uh, the heat of the moment changed the dynamics of things. But uh, I don't think that was specifically for Buzz because it goes exactly against Musk's MO, which is to, to over-deliver, to over-succeed, not to smash the windows on, smash one window and then go back and smash the other <laughs> one on your new vehicle that's supposedly impossible to break. You're supposed to land the rocket. That's the Elon Musk yeah. brand. You, the, the window's not supposed to break. But, Mike, I mean, we, we've seen this before, those of us who have covered tech for a while. Steve Jobs had demo fails, and he was the demo guy. Everybody, it's amazing how he can get people to pay attention. When it comes down to it, do they just have to sell enough of these to Tesla's existing base, you think? Is it about being able to immediately recognize this on the, on the road and, and continue to have that sense of something being special, or um, does this really hurt? Yeah, look, I, I really think this is one of those things where they, they do get the real early adopters on this. They, they, uh, they sort of drive talking. I think, you know, if you look at the past history of the past two years of product unveils, it's been these big leaps forward. They wanted to do uh, trucks. They wanted to do, you know, for uh, some of the power stuff, the power wall, right? And, and it's never something that's just very sort of slow and iterative. And, and I think that's, that's how they keep sort of uh, keep that momentum. You know, again, uh, financially, I don't know if this is going to be a big blockbuster. Obviously, it's very polarizing and, and not like a mainstream vehicle right away. But I still think this is probably a positive uh, if they sell to a lot of their base and, and sort of uh, get that, that, that publicity, at least positive publicity among those folks for a little while. I, you know, I think as Mike says, this is a vehicle for nerds, but nerds are, in, are not the core market for pickup trucks. Pickup trucks <laughs> is a big category, it's, and the, the prices are higher than, than general sedans. So it makes a lot of sense to go, for Tesla to go after this. But does it make sense for Tesla to go after this with a, a nerd vehicle? Um, and what, it's important to recognize that Tesla still has operational and cast controls. Their latest quarter looked a bit better. They have two other uh, vehicles they still have, that they've announced that they still have to get out the door there, the crossover vehicle and the semi-truck. So Tesla has its hands full to, to create a niche vehicle when we know that the big truck makers who have off the charts buyer loyalty, actually more than any other category, people love their Ford F-150s or their, uh, their Chevy trucks. Um, and they're all coming out with electric trucks as well. So this is about you're a truck owner, you want an electric vehicle. I don't think you're going to buy one of these. Mike, here's one of the things I think that's getting overlooked. You've got a truck that's being built of the same cold rolled steel alloy as the Starship rocket system that SpaceX is developing right now too. You're basically creating more of a market for this type of metal and thus potentially, even if it's a niche product, driving down the costs for the steel that Musk's two companies are now looking to use. I wonder if there I wonder if that's a piece of this too, that there's gonna be more cross pollination between these two companies and maybe you're talking about a truck that long term makes its way to the moon as NASA's looking to, you know, uh, re release requests for lunar rovers and the like. No, I really like, I like the idea that the products sort of reinforce other products that the companies are building. I, I would amend my statement to say it's a truck for nerds and preppers who are basically preparing for uh, driving off into the woods at some point. He said it was able to withstand a 9 millimeter bullet at some point. So, I don't know. I think it's this... Um, conflation of 
of the the end of the world scenario that a lot of uh, futurists kind of look at right now, and perhaps it's even playing to that. Now, to Kevin's point, I don't know how big a market that is, but it's still kind of fun to look at.